episode of the Planeswalkers Pub. I'm your host, Eric. I'm Eric. Howdy, it's RJ. Today, we are going to be talking about upgrading your pre-cons. But first, let's talk about our signature card. Yes, every episode of the Planeswalkers Pub will feature a signature card that may or may not relate to the episode's topic. Today's signature card is Cryptic Annelid. It is a three and a blue, 1-4 worm beast creature that says, when Cryptic Annelid enters the battlefield, scry one then scry 2, then scry 3. To scry X, look at the top X cards of your library, then put any number of them on the bottom of your library and the rest on top in any order. Yeah, so this is a really, really cool card just because scrying in general is fantastic. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's, it's great because you look at the top card, if it's like, you know, something you want, you keep it on top. If it's not, you just put it to the bottom. Then you look at the top two. And if you want to keep one of those, put one on top, one at the bottom, and then look at the top three. It's great. Or yeah. a power play and just put all of them on the bottom. Just Without like, looking at them? Don't look at anything, <laughs> just bottom. Cool, so like so bottom, 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 bottom. bottom. Yes. <laughs> so what decks do you think this should go into? Um, well, the first card that comes to mind is Narsen Line Master. You want to manipulate the top card of your deck so you can cast off her trigger. Very good. Or the uh, the new precon one, Elsha of the Infinite. Yes. She is also a good top deck commander. I was thinking more or less like Niv Mizzet or Locust God, just because they're the ones that always want to draw a bunch of cards anyway. So being able to see what's coming next and setting up that draw can really, really help. Any deck that typically wants to run Scroll Rack or, Div- or Sensei's Divining Top probably wants this in. It's definitely not an auto-include in all blue decks, but ones that want to manipulate your draws. It can also help uh, getting through those land masses so you don't get flooded. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because we've all had those games where just like land, land, land. Oh, look at that. It's Cultivate to get more lands. Yeah, so. perfect. <laughs> I have one land. I kept a one land hand. This will be real risky. And then I draw eight lands. Yeah, so it's fine, but the downside, you're not yeah, li- you're literally not doing, not doing anything. anything. After turn two, yeah. I'm done. So this can be really, really cool. Even better if you can, like, flicker it or blink it or something oh, in that yeah, sense. Yeah. Or if you're playing Yara, get double scry triggers. So then you would so you would scry... So would you scry one, two, then three, or would you scry two, four, then... You'd scry one, they, two, twice, then... Or wait, wait, they would all get their own triggers. So then you would so scry, scry one, scry one, scry, scry two, two, scry two, scry three, scry three. Scry three. Would it do it like that, or could you... Would you... Or would you rather... It's your... Oh, you control the trigger, so you would choose in what order they resolve in, I believe. I well, would that's, honestly well, so do Yark it says, one, two, three, but, one, two, three. So you just get the ultimate dig. Well, no, isn't, isn't one, one, two, two... Because, I mean, think about so, it. So if you're going one... Think, three, I, I think, think it would be an order of one, two, three, and then one, one two, two, three. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Because they're, they're, they're all one Yark basically makes, like, a copy trigger. of it type deal. Which, yeah. like, when ETB makes a copy of it, but just, the copy doesn't show up. So, because it's kind of like the, um, the wizard chick commander. That makes yeah. a copy of a wizard or whatever. So I feel like Yark's kind of like that, where it's just, when it enters, it makes a phantom copy that also does its trigger as well. So then, yeah. Even still, that's, you're going, what, 10 cards deep, technically? Yeah. Three, then two, Twelve. then one. Well, yeah, I'm so saying if you treat them all separately and you put all of them on the bottom, then you're going one plus two is three, three is six. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One right, right, plus right, right. two is, is three, yeah. three is six. Yeah, so then, yeah. It's dangerous regardless. It it's is, amazing. It is. So then would you actually put this in your Yark deck? Honestly, probably not. That was just a cool combo I thought of, but there are a lot better interactions with Yark than this guy. You also have a bunch of fetches enough, so you're always like shuffling a library anyway. <laughs> you forget yeah. that Eric here plays to win <laughs> and plays good cards. He doesn't play meme cards like I do. This is a meme card. Let me play Crescendo of War and just... Yeah. Could you imagine just an oh. blinking every turn? Oh god, let's just forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Forget about Set it. Set up those miracles. Set up yeah. those miracles. <laughs> I mean, I is definitely another include for uh, this okay. card. So there wasn't an episode last week because we were hard at work brewing with the new Commander 2019 decks. Most, if not all, the deck lists can be found online at Wizards' website. So we each took our favorite mechanic and upgraded it using one of the precon commanders. Wizards' website is there's gonna be a link inside the actual description below, as well as the link to on tap down for all of our actual deck lists. This so way you guys can actually look at them and peruse them. So let's talk about uh, one of the decks that Eric actually did, which is Morph. Morph. Since uh, I'm the guy who plays to win, thanks RJ. You're welcome. I man. obviously chose the what most people agreed to be on the most powerful deck, at least yeah, right out of the box. That would be uh, the Sultai Morph with Kadir. Dina the Slinking Sorcerer being the lead player. For those of you who may need a reminder, she's one and Sultai, a black, a green, and a blue for 3-3. 
Naga Wizard. The first face down spell you cast each turn costs three less, and whenever you play a face down card, you draw a card. Morph is the name of the game here, and obviously most of the cards in the precon strengthen this idea. But not all of them do. Some of them were really quite weak, and I cut a good amount of them. Some of the weaker cards I chose were Theolite Hermit. He is a morph card, but when he, when he flips face up, he creates Sapperlings, which this deck doesn't really do anything with. So I decided to remove it for exchange of better cards. Another card I took out was Great Oak Guardian. It is Flash and gives plus two plus two to everything on your board. I feel this kind of pump effect didn't really make sense in the morph style. No big tree boy? No big tree boy. Is that a, is that a stagnant effect? Or is that just, just, it's just for the turn. a one-time thing. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can kind of see if someone's trying to like Toxic Deluge, you can flash it out after they paid. That's the thing, though, is like, where is... I mean, I guess that... Plus how big two is plus two is gonna matter. But yeah, how big is your command? She's like a what, three five? She's a three three. Someone's gonna be three. toxic deluging for more than that. Usually, if you're doing toxic deluge, you're either wiping a board of tokens or you're getting rid of one big threat. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because like if you're because his deck is more or less just like a bunch of two two. So I feel like if you got like seven or eight, I would toxic deluge for like I guess three at that point to make sure he hits his commander too, and then you can just flash this out to make everything bigger to survive the toxic. But true. Yeah, but that's a corner case. But yeah, uh, that's that true. playing this it's just to counter. A toxic deluge, which may or not may not appear, yeah. is really substandard. Another card I took out was Hex. Aww. <laughs> what does Hex do? Remind Hex me? is a. It's a really. It's like it's four black black. So it's like six mana, and then you basically select six or uh, you destroy, destroy exactly six target six creatures. creatures. Because the thing is, because of the way that it's worded, when you're targeting all six, if someone sacrifices one in response, the spell just fizzles. Because you, you really, have to have six targets. You really yes. blame him for taking that out? You, you, no, you, I just I just like the way you print it, because it's, it's a random card that like we probably would have used as a signature card had they not printed it, and I would just... It's a cool... It's a dumb card. Don't get me wrong. Like, if you're going to run that card, and you're like, this is my only option to run in cards to kill a bunch of creatures, literally buy a board wipe. Get a board wipe. <laughs> it's board wipes are... Like, There's cheap board wipes. There yeah. are cheap board wipes. Okay. Pay two more mana. Plague Wind. Play the same amount of mana if you're an Orzhov and you get Merciless Eviction. Yeah. Play two less mana and I'm you've got... I'm trying to think of, like, probably same budget styles. Gingarok's yeah. Wake. I think that's coming in one of these ones. It's it coming one. in my pre actually. It's coming in your pre uh, yeah. That is one more mana and it hits only your opponent's stuff. Yeah. In any case, I cut Hex because uh, needing to have exactly six creatures, I feel, is a tall order. Yeah. Even in four-player ADH. And uh, if your opponents don't have enough, you have to target your own stuff, That's which like is generally one. not a good idea. Oh, yeah. I also cut Overwhelming Stampede and Biomass Mutation. Um, I don't see Morphs as a Swarm style kind of deck. They do have a board presence, but they're not swarming massively. So I think team pump effects like this are rather lackluster in the play style. I'm actually kind of surprised Overwhelming Stampede wasn't in the Naya deck. Yeah, the, what does Overwhelming Stampede do if you don't mind me asking? Uh, all your creatures get plus X plus X for the number of creatures. It's basically like a small crater hoof for like four mana. I also cut Tezzeret's Gambit. Uh, three and a blue or Phyrexian mana. Draw three cards and proliferate. This deck has little to no plus one plus one counters at all. The only thing it has is the Megamorph mechanic, and that is very light. It's almost a sub-mechanic in the deck. And drawing three cards for three mana and two life isn't really the best idea. And yeah. your commander already cantrips you anyway by playing morphs. Explorer was another one on the way out. One in a green, you may play an additional end this turn, and draw a card. Or just second. play Farseek, which is in this deck or Rapid Growth. I play it in Wind Grace, but that's because that's a Lands Matter deck, and I'll have a Lands in hand yeah, and do stuff like that. I also cut Bounty of Luxa, which is a really weird enchantment from Amaket or Hour of Devastation, I don't know which one, where it's Simic and one, I believe. It's enchantment, uh, and it plays with Flood Counters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that one that puts a Flood Counter on um, non-island? No, it puts, no. A fl it puts a Brick Counter on itself, I yeah. thought. Well, oh, it's yeah, called yeah. a Flood clown Counter, but it might as well be a Brick Counter. And you either when you take the counters off and you draw a card, Don't you and you put that a one flood too? counter on, and you get Simic and a Colorless. Yeah. So each turn it switches off. Yeah, it's a it's weird. 
Yeah, it's, it's weird. It feels and like it's good slow. Music, but you can't. But here's a question: Any the reason I'm bringing this up because I took out some lands from my deck. Uh, any lands did you have to take out specifically? Nah, I kept the land base uh, oh, alone pretty much. That's sure. if you really if you're trying to up, bump up the power level, put in shock lands, put in up check. Yeah, well, I, I I kind of avoided self evident advice yeah. like that. That's yeah. that's why it, that's because it's a it's a given. If you want to yeah. bump up the power of the deck a good amount. Change the land base. Change well, the land base. Only, I guess, excuse me, I had like two seconds. Um, there is Baron Moore, and then the other red one that does the same principle, just has cycling or just taps for red. Yeah. It comes in tap. I like, I the, like cycling. the cycling lands. Well, this thing, I took them out of the magic because I'm drawing a lot of cards anyway. I don't need the additional. So I took those two out and just put it in a swamp and then bow it. I'll leave mine in just because I, I don't know why. I, I have this weird thing with the cycling lands. I like them. Do you have Temple uh, False God in your deck too, or no? Yes. Okay, so all the decks have Temple then? Yep. Oh, that's nice. Last um, cuts, uh, surprisingly, were the three other legends that were not Kadena. Ryami, Volrath, and Grismond. While cool and interesting, do not have anything to do with, more with morphs. Ryami has really no keywords to steal from me, so I'd have to rely entirely on my opponents. Volrath could turn himself into one of my Megamorph creatures, but he would get no relevant abilities from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Grismog creates sapling token, creates plant tokens at the end step, and makes himself bigger when they die. None of these have anything to do with Morph, okay, so. and they demand their own build arounds. So that's what you took out. That's what so I took out. In. Now, yeah. let's see what I fun took part. in. I generally try to avoid uber staples like Rhystic Study, Cyclonic Rift, because you're going to add these things anyway if they're the good stuff in your colors. Yeah. So I mainly focused them. on the morph mechanic entirely. But some generic things were just too good not to mention, such as Leyline of Anticipation. Yep. Mm. It was printed in Corset 2020. This deck has Seedborn Muse. So it goes without saying that Leyline and Seedborn combines really well with your commander because every turn you get to cast a morph for free. And with Seedborn, you get to untap your lands to flip those morphs. Oh no no no! It's crazy! It's it's like, crazy! It's insane! The sec and the fact that she's in blue, which means yes, you can run that. Um, because she's also in blue green, you can technically run the land that gives you flash for the turn as well. Yeah, Alchemist Refuge. Yep. If you can afford the more expensive cousin Leyline, Vidalcanore is also an option, so you can double up on your flash triggers. The next three are related to each other, which is like cousins. Dream Chisel, Ugin the Ineffable, and Cloudstone Curio. Ooh, Ugin's really really good. Um, yes. Ugin's on screen oh, right now. No. He states that it's just his passive effect is colorless spells, spells cost, cost two, two less. less. Dream Chisel does a similar thing. It costs two, and face down creature spells you play cost one less. So if you have this and Ugin up, all your morphs are free. Oh, look, you're playing Beyond Kadena's uh, first. Gross, that's gross. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> gross. It's gross, it's gross. Like, With Cloudstone Curio up. Why do you have Cloud? You put Cloudstone in this? Yes. Oh, fuck. Come on, man. If you have Kadena, Ugin, Dream Chisel, and Cloudstone Curio, and two morphs, you can essentially draw your entire deck because every morph you play can return the other one, and each morph you play, you draw a card. Now, this is a multi card combo, that's true, but you do have artifact tutors in blue and generic tutors in black. And Kadena herself is a cantrip commander, so you're drawing through your deck. Even if you don't set this combo up, these pieces individually can still improve your power. Yeah. I don't feel so bad now for what I did to my deck now because of what Eric is. Me neither. <laughs> hey, I... Because I, I was, I, when I first made my deck, I was just like, I was like, mm, I don't know, this is kind of, this is going to be kind of spicy, but I'm just like, wait, I have Eric, so I don't... Whatever I'm doing, he's going to double it, so it's fine. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like making strong decks. What's wrong with that? It's fine. Just like, you know, okay, cool. Like, you know, turn four, combo off, win. Like, just going to okay, draw my entire I, I deck don't... and Lab Man. This... Is Lab Man in that deck? No, but he can Should you be. put Lab Man he in is, that deck? If you're going for this combo I feel like specifically, if you're pulling, if you're pulling yes, stone, you should I feel play like if you're going, Lab Man. If you're going for Stone Curio, you should probably put Lab Man in there, too. So, that's enough of the combo janky... Uh, stuff. Yay, combo jank. Uh, mm. How about some more actual morph support? This next one is one that people basically call the Morph King. Ixador, Reality Sculptor. 
Three, double blue for three, four, wizard legend. Base down creatures get plus one, plus one. So he's a morph lord. And uh, two and a blue, turn target face down creature face up. Excuse me? Yes. Two and a blue, turn target face down creature face up. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> so if your morph cost is more expensive than that, he cheapens it. All the morphs are more expensive than two. I, well, some aren't. 90% of them are. What? Yeah. That card's dumb! It's very dumb. Uh, it's also That's why legal? it's... Uh, yeah, it's also why it's Judge. for uh, $13 on TCG Player. Unsurprisingly, he spiked like crazy when the Morph deck was released. He was like Judge. a dollar or two previously. Ugh. Thank you, MTG Finance. That's just Jesus! That's... A lot of people were really disappointed this guy wasn't reprinted in the deck. Because they didn't want to break the deck. They already gave you Seabra Muse. This is true. But come on. Jesus Christ. If you're gonna flip those cards face up, you might wanna flip them face down. So you might also wanna include Master of the Veil. Two and two blue, a wizard with morph. Two and one. Uh, when he's turned face up, you may turn target creature with morph face down. So flip him up, flip another one face down. You could also flip Wait, himself does it say another, or... face down does it say pointlessly. An does it say another? No, or... it's just target. So then technically, I guess you could take a flip him. If they, maybe you have it's not really an ETB because they're already on the field. No, they're already on the field. And you see, I don't know why you would do this, but you could. Yeah, there's no real flip mechanic that like, pumps it or anything crazy, so yeah. He's uh, for recycling your morphs. Basically. Which is always good. There's also a mischievous Quantar. Four and a blue. For a 3-3 three, three beast. Uh, you can pay three and two blue to turn him face down. Uh, he has a morph of one and two blue. And when he's turned face up, copy target instant or sorcery. You may choose new targets for this copy. So it's forks. Yes. Ew. I know, right? And <laughs> he turns himself face down to, for reuse. Wait, and he turns himself face down? Yeah, three and two blue turn him face down. Ew, that's gross. You know what? You know what? I play Garux Wake. So basically, what's happening? Is the I fact copy of, Garux. Wake. So basically, what's happening is the fact of what Eric's stating is that we all need to just play blue decks and buy every version of Stifle on the planet. Is what he's saying. <laughs> Hey, don't don't do me like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't you, know. You know man. What you're playing black. You you have those cards that just say, "Look through the opponent's hand, library, and graveyard, and exile all cards with a certain name." Play that, you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna remember what name that. There's you too know, many good options. Was, what was the name of that? Say the name again. Mischievous Quantar. I'm not gonna remember. I'm that. Saying, I'm not gonna remember that. There's, there's too many. There's too many good. Plus, I'm probably gonna. Too many. I cells. probably hit Ixodron. If not, if I'm going for something, I'm going for Ixodron. If I'm digging through his library, I'm going for Ixodron because that's that's the big daddy that you need. Yeah. My last edition was Weaver of Lies. Five and two blue for four four beast. Morph of one and a blue. When he's turned face up, turn any number of target creatures with morph other than himself face down. It's very gross. <laughs> oh my god, it's it, dumb. It when he's turned face up, turn any number of target creatures with morph other than himself face down. So basically with him and then the other guy can turn it face down. You basically have a nice little chain at that point where you can just constantly have your... <laughs> <laughs> so yep. that sobbing that you hear is RJ. Why are I'm... you building this? And I'm right with Why him. Why do you hate me? And I'm right with him because that's... I think we made... A... Mistakes were made. Hashtag mistakes were made. Why did we because give him the morph deck? I don't know. <laughs> we should have made him do flashbacks. I don't know. That, that would have broken flashbacks. <laughs> Look at the bright side. Look at the bright side. Give him the, give him the token one then. God. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. One to Ella Snorn, and we're all safe. Oh, sh you're right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Unless I counter Ella Snorn. Shut up. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> With your billion freaking counters now. Yeah. You've got oh, there is a morph guy creatures. in the pre con that just flips face up. Oh. Then you can flip it back face down. <laughs> oh my god, it's worse than freaking. Uh, Blaine, it's just, this, his entire deck is Blaine Lenja. Is what you're saying. His <laughs> entire deck. Whatever morph is on the field, we're all fear for a lot because it could be a freaking Glenelendra. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, Jesus. oh, and with Leyline or Vidak and Ori, you have to worry about the face down cards and, and the cards. Of your <laughs> so it all ties in really well with the mystery theme. You've activated my trap card, Yugi Boy. Which trap card, Kaiba? All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. <laughs> So yeah, those were my additions and removals. Uh, I didn't make a whole deck out of it. I just found cool cards to add and cool cards and not cool cards. 
to remove. And as our removal from the Planeswalker pop, I am casting you out. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we counter your entry into the Tapestry. I arcane denial your <laughs> casting me out. I dove in, in, res- in response, I dove in veto, hold priority, cast sudden spoilage, targeting you. So that split second, everything resolves. You I are fl- cast I flip over Kadena Silencer, counter all your abilities. Oh, f- Oh, so fun fact. So what we just, that was a small little skit, but morphs interact, they don't use a stack, which means you can use something like sudden spoiling to have split second, which means nothing else can go in the stack. A morph flipping up, that doesn't use the stack, and its effect will go above the sudden spoilage. Lots of fun. Is it though? It's not. It's Sultai. <laughs> it's moving on. Hey, you know what? After that madness, Let's move on to madness. Yeah, um, let's get mad is the title of my deck in general. I feel so bad now because I'm just like, it's a hand attack style deck. If people don't know what hand attack basically means. It's cards like Mind Rots. There's the one single black that is currently in standard, which is on screen right now, which is amazing. Which basically, the, car- the cards themselves target your opponents and then have them discard cards. Because in Magic, typically your hand is the only way you can do stuff. And then once you become, you're just top decking one card at a time, it gets really sluggish and you really can't do play Magic. So we have to like basically target your opponents and then make them discard cards. Because once they have no cards in hand, they also lose options. Which seems like a good idea against the morph nightmare that's about to hit us. So that's a thing. So what you're telling me is when I play against the two of you, I won't be Play. All the all everything I have will be countered by Morph Boy. Or you don't have anything in your hand. Hand to path because <laughs> of Madness Man. There will be stuff because obviously with Madness there is a bunch of wheel effects which I do put a bunch in there. But let's sort of talk about the stuff that I take out. First thing I'm taking out, which is probably going to be controversial, I'm taking out the odd mix list that they're giving us. Really? Yes. I'm putting in the other one from War of the Spark. Oh. That says whenever a player an opponent draws a card, they burn for one. So, that's uh, that's a good idea. Uh, with the other mixes, you can actually plus him, draw a card, and comes a very like Phyrexian Arena style where you just kind of draw a card, you burn for one, which is nice, but I've got a bunch of other draw cards in here. I don't need another one. That's what my Planeswalker, that can die. Because I put Underworld Connections in the deck because it's basically the exact same thing, but it's on a land, which is a lot harder to deal with. I took out Angie's Ravager. The vampire? The vampire, yes. That specifically makes Made for you... the deck, yeah. So I took him out because... I'm shocked. <laughs> just explain to me what he does real quick. Leaves a 3-1 for 3-1. Mm-hmm in a red, as madness one in a red. Uh, he has to attack each turn. He's a 3-3. Three, three. And whenever he attacks, you discard your hand and draw three cards. Yes, which is great. But the thing is, if I have to attack every single turn, and the problem with that is I'm discarding my entire hand and drawing three. I built this deck more of a control style deck. Of course you did. Yeah, of course you did. Really? Aaron, building a control deck. I know, right? Who knew? But what's even better is it's control in Rakdis. So it's something that people haven't actually seen before. It kind of sounds like you made a Nekusar deck without blue. Or without Nekuzar. Yes and yes. But it's good. But no, no, no. There's not that many discard. There's not that much discarding of opponent's hands that much. But there you is a lot of... this is a hand hate deck. It is a hand hate deck in the sense of uh, there's a lot of discard cards. But, you know, some of them are really fun and interesting. For instance, one really, really fun and interesting card. I know I'm kind of skipping all around, but that's my style. It's a madness. Guess what? We're, gonna, we're not going to follow this. Wait, you're not going to target yourself with your own discard effects. Because that's the wrong way to play madness. <laughs> I think what he's doing... I don't think he's actually running singular madness. Like, I don't think he's running madness. Rotten there, or are you, you madman? I'm not running mine rot, but I'm running a different couple of effects. Um, one specific one that I just personally really, really like Burning Inquiry, which is a single red for a sorcery. Each player draws three cards, then discards three cards at random. So, something like at that, random. yes, <sighs> at random. Now, with Madness, whenever I discard a card with Madness, I can basically just cast it. Because it goes into exile first, then I can cast it, or it goes to the graveyard. I don't care what I'm discarding, because I'm running Madness anyway. Who cares? <laughs> um, one card I am definitely keeping in the deck is Squee, just because... Squee! Squee's amazing. Is Ange your commander for this? Yes, Ange is definitely the commander for this. I took out... Your favorite boy, the son of Yagma, took him out because I don't need him. Crack. Crack. I don't need him. <laughs> in your madness costs that have black in them, you can just pay life. Well, here's the thing. A lot of the actual madness, a lot of the actual things that draw me cards also ping me for one life. So I don't want to add Crick on top of that because that's, I'll be forced. Crick is lifeline. But I want you Swing to destroy with him, your life. And total. every black spell you get, he yeah. gets bigger. I want you to hurt yourself. I know. Some of the other things, let's just talk about the things I actually put in for the most part. Avacyn's Judgment is staying in the deck because it's a madness. Um, Avacyn's Judgment is one in red. 
and for a sorcery it has madness for x and red hours and judgment deals two damage divided as i choose among any number of creatures or players and then i can pay if it's madness cost is paid instead i can pay x and then red and then it deals x damage to those creatures or players instead so that's the thing that because it's really nice cool combat trick mm -hmm. for the most part on your opponent's turn or whatever hey discard this ping a bunch of stuff or just ping you guys whatever that's or uh, it could, could be an instant speed board wipe yeah. or just a speed board wipe for like tokens or something in that sense chaos warp is just a very good removal mm -hmm. yes there is the chaotic nature of hey you can shuffle away that seaborn music and they get a blight steal yes true that sucks but they could also get a land but they could also get a land they which could also is... hit a sorcery and not get anything this exactly. is also true. So those are always really cool. One thing I did, it's actually from your deck that I got the idea. It is uh, a yeah. Cathartic Reunion. It's mm -hmm. one in red for a sorcery um, as additional cost of castes. I have to discard two cards and then draw three cards. So it's a cool little cantrip at that point. That could result in more cards because of the madness. Yes. I also added in Torment of Hillfire just because it's a very, very good black finisher. This deck has a, I don't want to say it's a problem, but the main problem is that it dirtles a lot and does it does this cool thing which is like you know drawing a bunch of cards and then discarding a bunch of cards and hitting your opponents for like just making sure they don't have any cards in hand but there's no real win con in it yeah. so i figured the best win con is just torment of hellfire it is torment like, of i don't know if you'll generate enough mana to kill with a torment you would of think so but torment of hellfire is x black black for sorcery repeat the following process x time and the process is this each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card keyword there is or discards a card if they've got no cards in hand they've got to start sacrificing non-land permanents if they've got no permanents on the field because of blasphemous act which i did also put in the deck then they have to either just just start sacking other things or just eating a bunch of life you would think normally that because urborg and cabal carvers i don't own those i don't plan on buying those for this deck even though i technically should and you totally can you would think that this deck doesn't get a lot of lands but the cool thing is because i'm constantly drawing cards i'm always hitting my land drops or at the yeah. very least i'm always trying to hit most of my land drops anyway right. so and even if i into the rocks too. exactly even if x is 10 which is easily to yeah. do that's only 12 mana x is 10 you've got no cards in hand you've got no creatures on board you're taking what 30, 30 damage, damage? Yeah. you know x could be 12 if you play crack <laughs> i'm not playing Crick. He's your boy, I'm not playing him. I am playing a cool card, which is called Last Rights, which I'm going to be using on you. So, it is two... <laughs> last Rights, more like Last Wrongs. So it's two and a... But, um... So it's two and... <laughs> you guys suck so bad. So it's two and a black uh, for a sorcery. Discard any number of cards. Target player reveals his or her hand. Then you choose a non-land card from it. For each card discarded this way, that player discards those cards. That's the hand attack style of it, where it's just, hey, let me see your hand. That, that, and that, no. <laughs> How much mana did you say that was? It's two and a, it's two and a black. So yes, I know. It could Pre be two. I know, but once again, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the point is, that's a cool hand tech pick. So let's actually talk about the stuff that is going to hurt me. Yes, um, I'm going to Raz Aaron every time he plays a black spell that could be good. made better with Crack. It's fine. It's but let's talk about stuff that's actually going to hurt me then. Good thing I picked Naya. Um, <laughs> I'm to hear about Crick. So Underworld Connection, we mentioned before, it's one black black for enchantment land, and it says the enchantment land has tap, pay a life, draw a card. So that's losing life at that sense. It's these, it draws me a card whenever I need to draw a card because most of the other things have just draw a card and then discard a card. So if I don't want to discard, it kind of works. If you're gonna do that kind of effect, I think Greed or Phyrexian Arena would work better. They would technically work a lot better, but I want to be able to maintain my life where I'm at because there's going to be, we'll mention this once we get further, but there's going to be like several effects like that. All of my upkeep, I'm taking like up to three life a turn. I don't want to add more to that because I'm also being attacked by opponents. That's fair. Because <laughs> okay. once again, I'm discarding your cards. You're not going to want that. I like it just because once again, like you can choose to take the damage. If you've got some more life or whatever, you can choose to take damage. If you don't, you can just use the land for just mana yeah. versus, uh, versus the arena. You have to do it. One card that I'm really angry, the fact that they didn't put in the pre-con, is Gibbering Descent. It's four black black for an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses one life and discards a card. On your upkeep. Yeah. <laughs> And then it also has Hellbent, which basically means if I've got no cards in hand, I basically skip or my upkeep. So that's a downside if I've got no cards in hand, but the upside is I don't take the damage. But the, the way you've engineered this deck sounds like you're not going to have no cards in hand. So exactly. Plus, probably won't trigger Hellbent. Even better, the reason why I'm English was in the pre-cons because it has Madness for two and two black. This is a perfect card to put in that deck. I understand why they didn't because it is kind of an unfun card because you're constantly just hitting your opponents for one. 
which is great. And they're discarding cards. Maybe they put it in so because of the Hellbent and they didn't want to... Confuse people with too many mechanics? Yeah. I can understand that. War Storm Surge Love is still in the deck. It's five and red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. One card I added, which is amazing, and this is my personal pet card, it is Vicious Shadows. It's six and a red for an enchantment. It says, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, any creature, you may have Vicious Shadows deal damage to target player equal to the number of cards in the player's hand. So think about it this way. One of my creatures dies, I target RJ. You've got five cards in hand, you burn for five. One of Eric's creatures dies. I target Eric. He's got five cards in hand. He burns for five. One of your creatures dies. I target Eric again. Burns for another five. Katie's so creatures simple. dies. It's but one of those... You're making us discard cards. I am, but it's one of those things that, let's say I'm against someone who has a natural card draw engine going or something in that sense. You there know, are a lot of situations where, despite his card discarding effects, yeah. people can still draw cards. <laughs> True. If Plus... You're gonna, if you're going to use this kind of effect, I'd also suggest Kovas Fury. It's four and a red. Uh, you can choose friend or foe. For each friend, they discard their hand and draw that many cards plus one for each foe, uh, they burn for the amount of cards in their hand. That was originally on this list, but then I took it off because it's a one-off effect. And True. kind of like RJ said, it's one of those things that I'm constantly making people discard their cards and stuff in that sense. There's not, there's never going to be a good time for me to use that where I get the most benefit versus the Vicious Shadows. You board wipe, someone could just die right there. Yeah, they can. <laughs> well, the Kavras Fury has the benefit of you can choose every one friend, and if you have one of those cards that paying for the amount of cards they discard. Yeah. Which is very, very nice. There is also Waste Knot, which of course. goes inside this deck. It's an enchantment for one in a black. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a 2-2 zombie token. Whenever an opponent discards a land, um, add two black to your mana pool. And then whenever an opponent discards a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. Because this deck works basically at instant speed, but not really, that discarding a land I get to black mana could actually be really, really useful. Mm -hmm. Especially because that... I can then use to cast more madness cards or something in that sense. You're playing the creature version of that, aren't you? Uh, yes, because there is a creature version that is printed in this deck, and I also then put the enchantment version in here as well. The printed version states only when your stuff gets discarded, mm -hmm. the enchantment is when your opponent's. Mm -hmm. So that's the kit. But the point is, if I got both on the field, I'm just golden. Yeah, so I don't you... really care. The land base, like I said, I didn't really mess with that too much. Um, I actually kept most of the tap lands in there because it is a Rakdos. There's a lot of dual color, just black and white Rakdos colors that are tap lands. I didn't realize. They put all of them in the deck, so I didn't have to do that much work for that. Yeah. Um, I just kept them in there, even though they're tap, which kind of sucks. Rakdos, it's hard to find colors yeah. anyway. That just works out. I might put a Chromatic Lantern in this deck. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. I'll have to kind of see how it plays once it comes out. What do you think? It's also... A Chromatic Lantern is in my Orzhov deck because sometimes I'll get all black without white. Sometimes it's... You guys can decide if you want to put it in or not. I don't know. I guess the At least use is... the Signet and the Talisman first. Originally, the signet was in the here. I think I took out the signet. Why? Because the I signets needed, are great. I needed room for other stuff. All right. Oh, here's the thing. I took out the signet for Teferi's Puzzle Box. Okay. I, <laughs> that's, that's an interesting That's an interesting play. switch. I mean, I Teferi's Puzzle Box is good. So Teferi's Puzzle wrong. Box is also another of my pet cards. because It's just a stupid, great, cool card. Teferi's Puzzle Box is four for an artifact. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards from his or her hand on the bottom of his or her library in any order and then draws a mini card. So with Obnixus on the field, you're just burning for how many cards you're drawing. Also too, this deck is designed to basically keep your opponents off balance. They, the thought of constantly, either they're gonna wheel their cards or they're gonna lose their cards. It forces them to basically play right here and now, unless you have a Super use flash combo. Not of course. <laughs> and you know, unless you have a Super use flash combo. Um, just... But it's designed to keep your opponents off balance. The fact that I'm drawing a lot of cards, yes, but sometimes I just wanna have to get rid of all my cards without fully discarding them, which kinda sucks. Ooh, another really, really cool card that I really, really, really like that I found is Cranial Archive. It's too generic for an artifact, and it states, pay two, exile the archive, target player shuffles his or her graver into his or her library, and then I draw a card. There's also Elixir of Immortality, which I chose not to put in this deck, only because this one specifically says target player. Sometimes that could matter, and against like, you know, a Graveyard yeah, Shang and or, land and, or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it is also instant speed, you can do this, which That's is kind true. of nice. Typically, I use it on myself because I'm discarding too many cards. Key to the city I kept in the deck, um, tap it, discard a card. It's a two mana artifact, tap it, discard a card. Up to one target creature can block this, cannot be blocked this turn. And then 
during my untap step, when I untap it, I can pay two to draw a card. I typically just like it because just discarding a card is nice, because discarding a card is always great. Lightning Greaves, I had to add just because giving my commander protection or any creature that's important protection is very, very nice. Hazard's, Mo or Hazard's Monument, I put in the deck. It's uh, three mana for a legendary artifact. Red creature spells you cast cost one less. That's good. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card, and then if you do, draw a card. So once again, more discarding, synergy. more drawing, synergies all over and around. I also put in Jalum's Tome. It's three mana for an artifact, pay two, tap it, draw a card, and discard a card. One card I actually kept in there was Grimmer of the Dead, just because four mana for an artifact, pay one, tap it, discard a card, put a study counter on it, and then I can tap it to remove three study counters from it, and then put all creature cards from all graveyard onto the battlefield under my control. They become black zombies, which is cool. Oh, wow. Oh, that's uh it's really good it's it crazy crazy <laughs> and it's in Garrett's wake is a nice cool board wipe that we talked about beforehand seven black black i love i that like card. how it kills planeswalkers and it kills planeswalkers it's so flavorful it's, it's great. so powerful it's very it's a lot of mana but once you get up to that point the outcome is just so amazing that i had to keep it in there blasphemous act is the exact same thing it says eight in a red but for each creature on the battlefield it costs one generic less so some most of the time it just comes out for a single red it's a cool board wipe it's a very very cool board wipe Though the uh, the flashback commander is immune to Blasphemous Act. Yes, he is. Um, he from, is. From under the floorboards is something that's already in the deck. Or it's three black black, and then you can pay Madness with X black black, and basically just creates X zombies, two two zombies, and then you also gain X life if you pay his Madness cost, which is just amazing. Just zombies Gain X hand. life, you say? Yes. Mm. Seems like that would offset a certain uh, card. That you should be playing. Sir, um, I just that's a say son that. of someone, I sir, believe. Sir, okay, he is a continuous life loss throughout the game. Gaining a ton of life once probably won't make up for it in time. That's why you kill them before it matters. Yeah, that's not how the deck works. <laughs> um, one thing that is in the deck that I did add is uh, Biting Rain. It's two black black, but we don't care about that because it's madness is two and black. Um, for a sorcery, all creatures get minus two, minus two. My commander is a one three, so it she checks out. Yeah. It's like a mini Toxic Deluge at instant speed, which is always nice. One thing that I am going to actually use on Eric as well is a Psychic Episode, which is a really cool card. So Please explain. It is one black black. For starters, the art looks amazing. I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, it's one black black for sorcery. Target player reveals his or her hand and the top of his or her library. You choose a card revealed this way, put it onto the bottom of their library. You can, you can madness it out for one in the black. So someone goes to Demonic Tutor. I did a tutor. Any of the tutors that just goes on top of their library, I instantly cast this. Yep. See what they tutored for, as well as what's in their hand. And pitch it to the graveyard. And then put, it goes to the bottom of their library. Oh, wow. So it doesn't oh. mean go to the graveyard. That's my oh, point. That's, rude. that's so great. You have to wait till the tutor resolves first in order for you to do something. Oh, that. yeah, no, 100%. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I was going to my tutor rather than pass. I'm like, cool. Like, you know, like, just wait around, wait around. All right, well, this is going to top of my library. Well, my tutor goes to your hand. Yeah. Then I. One of them. Vampire, vampire, vampire tutor. Whatever. One of those. The point is this, because you can tap Ange to discard this. It now becomes an instant. You can then cast it, glance at their hand, glance at the top, see what they tutored for. Oh, that's going to be pretty bad for me. Hey, put it to the bottom. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's yeah, great. That's Plus, the that art thing is just about oh, is this beautiful. is it can be kind of funky with priority because if someone tutors at the end step of someone else, Depending on priority, you may miss the timing to play that. Well, it's also one of those things where it's like, um, everyone always has an upkeep before their draw. Yeah, that's true. They always have an upkeep before their draw, which means on their upkeep, I'm doing this. Okay. That there. works. That's always how that works. They always have an upkeep. I mean, that art just looks twisted, and I it love it. It does. <laughs> well, now that I know he's going to target me with these cards, and he's showing them to me, I know which cards to hold my morph counters for. I or to redirect to some of that. Oh, you target me? I'm gonna redirect it to RJ. <laughs> that would be. Why would you hate me? That would be I'm amazing. Kitty cat. Another card that's wheeling is uh, dark and dealing. deal. And dealing. Um, is actually dark <laughs> deal. Uh, it is two and a black for a sorcery. Does not have madness, unfortunately. But each player discards all cards in his or her hand, then draws that many minus one. Ooh, it's the opposite of most effects. Yes, which is great. But the point is, I'm discarding cards. Most of the time, it's squee. Um, I just love squee. I, so 
But isn't that the worst? You got the one that returns your hand, right? Yes. Okay. Because yep. I can discard him to Angie, even though she doesn't untap, I still just draw a card. Mm -hmm. One card that I had to add into the deck that wasn't in the deck is Wheel of Fates. Um, it is currently like $6-ish now. It is a suspend card. So you pay one to rather than you suspend it, which basically means you put it to the side, on the face up on the table with four counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you take away one of those counters. And then once all the counters are gone, it activates. Each player discards his or her hand and draws seven cards. It's a suspended wheel of fortune. Yes, which is very, very nice because suspend is always just really great. A card that is in the deck, which I kept in the deck, is Overseer of the Dams, uh, five, black, black, four, flyer. It's five, five. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, you may destroy a target creature. And then... Whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, create a 2-2 black zombie. So you automatically get this black zombie, which is great. And then even better is the fact that whenever something dies, you just get more zombies. Unfortunately, they come in tapped, which kind of sucks. Um, it doesn't I, seem like it fits the deck very well. No, but I needed a big creature that's in the air. So yeah, that's that's true. The other card doesn't really fit the deck that well is uh, Geth, Lord of the Bolt, who is also still in the deck. Oh, yeah. Just because it's a 5-5 five -five with Intimidate, which is great. Plus, I can grab artifacts or creatures from my opponent's uh, graveyard put into my side of the field. By paying Wait, X. you can do what now? You forget what Geth does. You don't remember Geth. Okay, so Geth is He's a 4 black black for a legendary creature zombie, 5-5 five, five with Intimidate. It has black X, or X and then pay a black. Uh -huh. uh, put target artifact or creature card with converted mana cost X from an opponent's and opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control tap. And that player mills the top X cards. Excuse me? <laughs> Sir? Yes. <laughs> Sir? I got it, guys. We got the excuse me out there. All right. <laughs> Jeez. Because we were saying excuse me to a lot of the bullshit stuff he was talking about, too. And we got one, guys. We got one. And this wow. Is a, this is in the pre kind. I didn't have to buy this at all. Oh my God, it used to be a $10 card. Now it's probably an $8 card. I mean, it's still currently a $10 card, but yeah, by the time it's... It's not released yet, so... Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's... Ooh, man. That yeah, is... That's good stuff. It's good, because he gets artifacts or creatures, that's which means good. most decks, I'm getting whatever I want. Plus, I just have to pay the converted mana cost of it, which is nice. Um, another card is pay magnification. It's one black and a red for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent is dealt three or more damage by a single source, that player discards a card. Uh, there... Uh, I thought oh, you were playing you Pain know. Reflection. Ugh. No. That's not, that's like a million dollars. It's like 30. Ugh. It's also like very not... No. It's very good though. I know it's very good, but no. Pain Manipulation just works my plan because whenever someone gets hit, it's an opponent, they discard a card. It's hand hate. It's it's amazing. Like I mentioned before, the new Omnix list from War of the Spark. Uh, the passive ability, whenever an opponent draws a card, Omnix list deals one damage to them. Turns in as a five loyalty plane driver. You can also minus two to destroy a target creature, and then if so, its controller draws two cards. So I can potentially do that. I can also make your opponents do that. They then burn, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, Chandra Flame Caller, because Eric, <laughs> he runs a Chandra deck, and that's how I mostly know about all these Chandra cards. But I like Chandra personally in general. Four red red for a five four mana Planeswalker. Plus one, put two, three, one red elementals tokens onto the battlefield. They have haste and then exile them at the end of the turn, and then pay zero, discard all cards in your hand, then draw that many cards, plus one, which is nice, if I desperately need to do it, and then minus X, uh, Chandra deals X damage to each creature. So that will most likely never be over two, because then I'll hit my own commander. Eh. Uh, Champion of Straight Souls, which is four black black for Skeleton Warrior, four four. Uh, pay three black black, tap, sacrifice X other creatures, return X target creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. So mm. that's a thing that happens. He's kind of cool just because that works. A card that has to go in this deck. If you're building this deck, this card, you need to buy it. I don't care how much it costs. Vodaren Pariah. She is three black black for a three three vampire horror flyer. It's important in fact she has madness for th for black 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 and sacrifice three other creatures transform her. She transforms into a six five flyer that says when she th transforms target opponent sacrifices three creatures. This card is dumb because it makes your opponent sacrifice creatures which is great. It's also a 6-5 in the air, mm. and you can madness it out basically turn 4. Yes, but the thing is, where you're getting your three creatures to sacrifice to transform her. Eh, just find them. Some are, you got Squeak. Find them. You yes. always got Squeak. Yeah, <laughs> so you got one out of three. Where are the other two? You can potentially sacrifice. The Chandra tokens. The Chandra tokens. Chandra tokens. Actually, yes. That's basically... I, um, so, I read it. This is on TapTown. The cool thing about TapTown is the fact that you can actually play test it. 
So I actually did play test this, and I, that's legit what I did. I created the Charm Tokens, she was on the field, created the Charm Tokens, cast Squee, sacked Charm Tokens and Squee, flipped her over, opponent then had to sacrifice three creatures, which is amazing. Uh, Reckless Swarm is still in the deck because that's just really cool. I added Psychosis Crawler because five mana artifact car, Psychosis Crawler power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand, which is good and bad. But the important thing is, whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Speaking of cards in hand, do you, are you playing uh, Reliquary Tower or Thought Vessel? I am. I did put Reliquary Tower in the deck, yes. Originally, when I first passed this through, I was like, do I really need it? I don't think so, because I'm probably going to have less cards in hand. But then I actually play test, and I'm like, I have more cards than I thought. Because sometimes you'll just keep lands, or you'll, you don't want to just keep up it for the madness triggers. Basically, you don't want to, like, yeah. you know, put some stuff in there that you really, really don't like. One thing I do like, and definitely I'm going to use, is Muck Drop. Yeah. What? <laughs> muck Drop? Muck Drop. Let me see this. Let me, and let you me see read this. Muck, muck drop. drop. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that, that's a real card. Found that's like a real child. card. That is not part of the unset. Okay, so it's three black black for a three three beast with flash. That's mostly important. And then it's with flash. Yes. Interesting. And it also has two and a black. You can madness it out. I can just imagine running out of the muck to try and get there at flash speed. Yeah, or just, I got him coming. Hang on. <laughs> um, and it says when muck drop comes into play, change the target of target spell that targets only a single creature to muck drop. So you go to path my commander. I flash this out or madness this out, and the path goes to the muck drop instead. He just lunges out of the mud. He's like, no, I got it. you. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Super oh, cool, that's right? A beautiful card. So, <laughs> oh man, uh, Ange is about to die. Tap Ange, discard, madness out, muck drop. Like, for uh, the save. For the save. Okay, like, I, so I've got a favorite card in green, which is just Scoop Mob, because it's just, I, it's fun to say, it's just like Scoop Mob. Scoop Mob. Like, it's, it's fun to say. Muck drop is my black version of that, just like, just like. Just gonna muck drop it out, like him. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so muck drop is really, really cool. He's got madness, which means he works directly with the deck. And more importantly, it just, it's fun to say, and it's a redirect, which most opponents don't see coming. Especially not in black. Especially not in black. Is it an ETB or is it yeah, a it's cast? An, yeah, it's an ETB. Okay. Um, another card I added is Blood Gift Demon. It's a three black black for a five four demon that's in the air. At the beginning of your upkeep, target player draws a card and loses one life. So I can technically target an opponent if I want them to either burn or something in that sense. Or I can usually target myself. I'm losing life that way. One of my one of the last cards I'm talking about is a uh, Glinthorn Buccaneer. It's a one red red for a Minotaur with two four with haste. Uh, when I discard a card. He deals one damage to each opponent, which is relevant. And then I can also pay one in red to discard a card and then draw a card. I can only activate that when he's attacking, but I just, him passively just standing there. Whenever I'm discarding a card, you guys are burning for one, which is amazing. Um, I do also want to mention very, very quickly, our signature card was a card called Bog Witch, which is two and a black for a 1-1 one, one Human Shaman. And you pay one single black, tap it, discard a card, and then add three black to your mana pool. So it's basically like Dark Ritual on a creature, but even better, that was our signature card at one point. More importantly, yes. it's a discard outlet that pays the madness cost. I discard this madness and it costs two and a black or two and two life and just cast it for free. Which is great. With this deck, I built it very, uh, it's mostly control because I'm deciding what cards you keep in your hand, what cards you don't, what looks scary on the board, what kind of doesn't. Got a lot of look at hand, choose, Basically. discard. Basically, also too, it's, there's, Wording is important in magic. So whenever it says look at target player's hand, only you technically can look at it. The table cannot. When it says reveal, your opponent puts those cards on the table and then everyone can see what's in their hand. So that's very important. So that's why I try to get a lot of reveal cards to kind of show the other table like, hey, we know he's got X and Y in his hand. Do you really want to be doing this? Maybe we should partner up. Even though RJ would fight against that, that's just how that works. Well, it depends on who I'm teaming up with. If Eric's playing your deck, then I'd team up with Eric. If you're <laughs> playing your deck, then I wouldn't team up with just kidding i love Aaron. <laughs> i need to stop targeting him in every game we play it's fine because i do a lot of really scary stuff and i do admit that he it's, spooks me it's fine <laughs> i'm very easily scared but that's my deck it's great it's super great i love it to death i cannot wait till it comes out all right moving on to the deck that i call goad greatest of all dudes stop get out get out <laughs> get out <laughs> get out <laughs> this kills the man get out <laughs> Starting off with RJ the... casts murder and then he forks it. We can't respond. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The commander obviously being Mary Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. He costs one Naya, red, green, and white. He is a 5-4 
cat warrior legend states your opponents can't cast spells during combat. Yep. In combat. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Whenever yep. a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, goad each creature that player controls. Which, goad is an old, weird mechanic that says, until your next turn, those creatures attack each combat if able, and attack a player other than you if able. Yes. We had a bit, a bit of a disagreement earlier about goad. Was, uh, we have a... It says they attack people other than you if able. If you goad everyone's creatures and you're in a one-on-one -on -one game, they're going to attack you. Yes. It doesn't just mean they can't attack. Well, yeah, other opponents if able, which means that if another opponent isn't available, then they inadvertently are... Okay, yeah, they're going sense. to attack you. So starting with... Also, the just so you know, the flavor text is beautiful. Cast off the law. Awaken your rage. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a bit of an issue. When I took Marisi... Well, here, let's just go into what I took out of the deck. So what you're going to do, you're going to take Marisi out of the deck... You're gonna put the rest of the deck aside, and you're gonna build this deck. <laughs> <laughs> so what there's are nothing in the old deck that could benefit him. There definitely is, but, maybe but like when I added cards, cards, I added 59 cards. Oh. So basically, um, what me and Eric, or Eric and I actually decided to do was we took the commander, we kind of just built it around it for the most part. The face commander. The face commander. Which is what the precons are built around. Exactly. Now RJ also did what we mentioned before in the last episode, which most which most commanders are going to do is take the deck, pick out who you want, and then just scrap the other the rest of the deck for parts, which is perfectly fine as well. Definitely, so. the pop from the Populate deck, there's some really good stuff that I definitely need to keep in here. The three enchantments let you draw cards. Uh, Colossal Majesty, where if you control a creature at the beginning of your upkeep with power four or greater, you draw a card. Mm -hmm. Call of the Elementals, I think is the name of it, where if whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. What about that uh, psychic creature you gain, you draw cards and gain life equal to its power? Uh, that's probably in here, but I think that's a one-off effect. It is. And I, I don't want to run a one-off like that. There are okay. other more re recurring ones, like the whenever a creature enters the battlefield. Uh, the Guardian Project. Yeah, the Guardian Project. That was the other one I was going to mention. That one would definitely be in here. Wait, is Guardian Project? Beast pretty... Whisperer too. It's not in the deck, but oh, Beast Whisperer should be added in. Beast Whisperer should be added in. Guardian Project should be added in. These are all under the label of card draw. Yeah. You're playing green, and there's some really good card draw in green. Yeah. Surprisingly, green has come a long way to draw cards. Yeah, it's crazy. We're going to start with, I have some labels for these, just things that go together. A there's, bunch of different uh, things. What I should have mentioned first is ramping. You have your obvious ramps, Kodama's Reach, Farseek, Sylvan Carotid, which taps for any color of mana. It's a good card. Two mana. Frontier Siege is an interesting one. Yeah. Three and a green, beginning of your main phase. If you choose cons, add two green to your mana pool. Yeah. Birds Paradise. Paradise Well, no, that's, that's, that's actually... With um, the two green team ramp, it's each main phase. It's each main phase, yes. Yeah. So that's really, really good. Uh, the Signets, Rampant Growth, Zendikar Resurgence. I love I like Zendikar that. Resurgence. It's an expensive card, but it also says whenever you cast a creature, draw a card. The, so f I'm going to read off the cards because these are going to get talked about. We already talked about some of them. The more expensive cards that you could put in. I tried to keep everything on this main list less than $5 or 5 or less. Mm -hmm. So the most expensive one on here, I think, is going to be um, Ghostly Prison. That's the most expensive card that I put on this list. Which is also being printed it's in one of the being printed in the, the pre So it's just under $5 now. This one is all about, this section is just combat damage effects. So what you're, what the goal of this deck is, is you want to go to everyone's creatures, tap them all down because they're, they're going to attack you or someone else, and then get some damage, get some combat damage effects in to just do some cool stuff. This deck's not made to take out the whole board and win the game in a turn. This is a cause some chaos. And starting with Aki Underminer, it's a three, it costs three and a red. It's a goblin. Whenever it deals combat, it's a one one. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player sacrifices a permanent. So yep. <laughs> just throw something out. Just rogues permanent. passage that guy. Oh, yeah. Rogues passage, I added in this list of cards already in the pre con. So that's a card Fair that we keep... They put Rogue's Passage in the pre-con? Yeah, Rogue's yeah. Passage is in the pre-con. Oh, no. <laughs> is this the one with Thran Dynamo, or is that... No, one this one ones? doesn't have Thran Dynamo, sadly. I think it's the flashback. Flashback. Oh, uh, okay. They, uh, they, they do all the way they get. Goes. They're in green, so they don't get to see where he is. That's true. I'm going to constantly keep playing on Seymour's, because... Are you playing the Goat Seymour. Sword in here? I The Goat Sword is in my deck. I but know, it, but... I should be. I didn't, because I thought, oh, rather than just play a bunch of other goad things, just keep my commander safe and keep my creatures hitting people. Yeah. RJ actually wants to take it more or less the creature-heavy route of it, which mm -hmm. is just, hey, I hit you. It's basically like Infect a little bit, where I have to block everything you're throwing at me, otherwise it's just a really bad time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I give you a really bad time. Uh, Caustic Wasps is two green, insect, one-one flyer, 
Whenever Caustic Wax deals combat damage to a player, you may destroy a target artifact that player controls. The hate coming out of this deck. The They're hate coming out of this deck. <laughs> this, there's a lot of hate in this one section. Then you have Hydra Omnivore. I believe it's four and two green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's then, a 6-6 uh, six, six Hydra with Trample, or is it just a 6-6? Six, six? Just a 6-6. Six, six. It's just a 6-6. Six, six. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you deal that much damage to each other opponent. Oh, if you're going to go that route, you should play Balfire Dragon in here. That is on a list towards the end, which is money cards to add. But I thought Balefire Dragon only deals damage to creatures your opponents control. It does, but if you fly over them, you'll True. burn their entire field for six, or more, depending on if you pump it. That's making the deck better, yeah. but less <laughs> chaos. Uh, no goading, but hey, yeah, do what you need to. Living Hive, it costs six and two green. Ooh. It's a six, six with trample. Oh. And whenever Living Hive deals combat damage to a player, put that many 1-1 one, one green insect tokens onto the battlefield. Yeah, I don't know if I'd run that. It was an interesting card I came across yeah. while I was doing my searching. Plus, if you have uh, to pump it or something in that sense, give it, give it the ability to not be touched. Polis Crusher. Two and uh, a red and a green. It's a 4-4 four, four Cyclops. Trample protection from enchantments. No stealing my stuff. Interesting. You can pay four, a red and a green, to make it monstrous three, giving it three plus one plus one counters making it a 7-7, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, if it's monstrous, destroy target enchantment that player controls. I, 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 I like that I'm one, hearing but there's a better hate. one uh, mm-hmm. that's too, too red Shaman and too green. Yep. It's also on this list. Okay. Sunder Shaman does the same thing. It doesn't have trample, but it's a 5-5 five, five for 4. Yes. And Good value. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it can't be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever it deals combat damage, you either destroy an artifact or an enchantment. I mean, yes. it, the fact that this is a Kingdom Luck 1 creature, you then give it menace some way, shape, or form. Oh, yeah. Um, the cloak is on the screen right now. Whisper and then of Cloak is in this deck list. Well, I was thinking not the Whisper of the one Chambers that actually... Cloak. The, yeah, the, the Chamber Cloak that actually gives it menace. And officially, by law of the game, it is unblockable. True. So, yeah. Slith Predator is a weird one. It's a cheap card that can get really big in a couple turns. It's it's just it's something you play early or even if you play later what you does hopefully it do? do. It's two green. It's a one one with trample, and it says whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, put a plus one plus one counter on it. That's cute, but mm-hmm. uh, I think that'd be a cut material. Well, here's yes. the thing, because the cool thing about the guild mechanic is the fact that because we're constantly swinging out with all of our creatures, we're not gonna have any blockers. Yeah. So it is a good. So these little guys can get in eventually. Oh yeah, yeah. spawn ride. Oh god, and when they get in, then you have to do it again. Oh god, that, that takes me such a pain. Yeah, yeah, but go doesn't sack like that. If they're already goaded, they don't get goaded again. Until uh... your next turn. Well, no, let's think, but let's think. On his turn, he's attacking with his creatures, and then your creatures are goaded again. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It's a cycle of everyone's going to be goaded 24-7. Uh, then you have... I guess you're going to throw three creatures at each opponent. Like, one creature yeah, when at I each opponent. Yeah. Which... When you um, can, obviously. Myriad has been something that we've been, that's been that been circling around the internet. Myriad yeah. states that whenever you attack one creature with a creature with Myriad, you create two identical copies attacking two the other... Well, you actually create identical copies attacking all other opponents. That is a really cool thing with goad because when each copy hits then you're goading then everyone's goaded yeah but that also i like what art is doing because myriad's kind of a i don't want to say a cheap way out but it's an easy way out the reason why i didn't put any myriad in the deck it's effective it's really good the first thing i did when i was building this is i went on edh rec and i said okay i'm going to try to avoid every single one of these cards because edh rec somebody already net decked and made the best deck possible you should have seen this list there were some insane really cool cards that they put on, on this list and I'm like, wow, these are all really good. I don't want to just feed you EDH rec. You can go on EDH rec yourself and look it up. Yeah. So I tried to do something interesting, pull something yeah. different, and there were a couple things of Myriad on there, and I'm like, those are really, really good. I'm going to take a step back from yeah. that and change it up a bit. Moving on, uh, Spawn Rive is an elemental. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a green with Trample. Whenever Spawn Rive deals combat damage to a player, put a token copy of Spawn Rive onto the battlefield. I like that. That card's too. It's very good. And also, the more tramplers you have, the better. Yeah, no, there's actually, in this deck, there's Brawn and Anger. Anger is more well known. It's whenever you have, if Anger's in your graveyard, and you have and a you mountain. mountain, everything has haste. Mm-hmm. Brawn, Brawn is the same thing, same. but forest and trample. Yes, sir. So I have both of those in there to fast, angry, big boys. Both of those are on screen. I've also never heard of Brawn in my existence, so that seems There's really a weird. one in every color for mm-hmm. those. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, because there's um the guy who's flying the blue one, the guy who's flying or whatever. Or is it Wander's blue? Yeah, and Wander's blue. And that's flying. Yeah. I don't know what the white and black ones are. Probably, Probably death, something death, with death touch and something with hexproof. Hexproof or lifelink. 
Vigilance, maybe? I don't know. Vigilance, Vigilance might be. Future yeah. Aaron will put them on screen. Yeah, all three of them, yep. all, all of them are on screen, whatever. I'm pretty so, sure it's Death Touch. Gavity Township, it is a land, taps for a colorless, or you can pay two and a green and a white, tap it, and pay a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Ha! It's less than five dollars. Plus each one, plus creature? one on each creature, each creature you control. You, control. you pay creature? how much to do this? You pay four mana. Of any color? Uh, two and a green and a white. Each creature? Each creature you Why control. Why am I not running that? <laughs> I That's, don't know. I like that. I played, it's from OG Innistrad. I played it in Standard, so I, it's always something that's in really the back of my mind. You should be running that. <laughs> you should. The thing Are I, you uh, playing Fervor? Fervor. That gives everything you have haste. Are you playing Vigor? <laughs> no and no. I think Vigor costs money, and Fervor, I don't know what, I actually didn't see that one in my search. Vigor's a couple bucks. Okay, so Vigor would definitely be in here. Because uh, Vigor is, um... It's 5 it's, it's green, a, it's a 6-6, six, six, and it whatever, green? something would be dealt no, damage. It's, I think it's 3 green, is it? Uh, yeah, it's, I believe it's... It's something it's 3 green, and 3 it? green, 6-6. Six, yeah, six. it's like 3 green, green, green for a 6-6. Six, Whenever six. a creature would be dealt damage. Put a plus and plus or counter on that creature. And Prevent the damage, yeah. You know what I would rather have than Fervor? Because Fervor's 2 and a red. I was going to put it in Dragons. It's a 1 red mana thing that says all creatures have haste. Uh, Fer Fervor states that only your creatures don't uh, have haste. <laughs> You just want to give to everybody? Oh, give everybody hate. Oh, okay. which means if they're good... There's also they... the green version, uh, Concord and Crossroads, but that costs money. A lot of money. Like 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, Fervor costs a couple cents. It costs three mana. That's a pretty good one that could be in here. Luminarch Ascension is just to help me go wide and get damage in, in the air. It, whenever whenever a turn ends, if you didn't take any damage, you put a counter on it. If it has four or more counters, oh, you get the mana, angels. make an angel. One Create card, the angels, angels swing out, uh, good stuff. Yeah, this card is actually money. I didn't realize when I put it on the list, it cost about $8. Miles Aria, it states Colors. at the beginning of your up, well, it costs uh, red, green, and white, or Naya. Enchantment, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. If a creature you, if you have a creature with power five or greater, then you gain 10 life if you control a creature with power 10 or greater. Then you win the game if you control a creature with power 20 or greater. Read that last line again because I couldn't quite hear you. So it states, you win the game if you control a creature with power 20 or greater. And this is during your upkeep? This is during your upkeep. Also, if you have a creature with power 10 or greater, you're still putting a plus one plus one counter on everything, and you're still gaining the 10 life. This is the exact same kind of jank stuff like Mechanized Production. That or, Just jank win um, cons like something that. Something similar mm -hmm. to uh, like Revelin Riches. Or Feldar Sovereign. Feldar Sovereign. Merit of the Siege. Merit of the Siege. Um, technically Lab Man to some extent. It's one of those cool cards that it just, cards that just say I win are really, really cool. Yeah. Um, because they're usually hard to get to. Yeah. Plus, they're also on the table. And even if you don't ever get to that 20, I win. 10 life? Every turn? Is a lot. <laughs> Plus, increasing your every creature on you have on the board by one every turn is a lot. Honestly, I think the plus one, plus one is the best effect. Yes, me too. Well, I the best practical effect. I think, Obviously, winning the game I mean, is the best. But... The, the plus one, plus one is very, very nice. Like I said, that once you're getting 10 life a turn, how much damage are you really being hit by that you're not just automatically getting ahead every single... Like, oh, yeah. Hey, you that's, could be that's double nuts. janked by playing Failed Our Sovereign. I could play Failed Our Sovereign in this deck. I mean, I would suggest not to, yeah, but... This is a life game deck. I have it in here as OG Borgrigmos, because there's the Borgrigmos and then Mad Boy Borgrigmos. Enraged. Mm -hmm. Mad Boy Borgrigmos. This one, OG Borgrigmos, just states, it costs a lot, three, two red and two green, came in the Gruel Guild Kit. It's a 6-7 with Trample. Whenever Borborygmos deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Yeah. A lot of plus <laughs> counter, a lot of Trample, a lot of, lot of damage. swing out for yeah. mm -hmm. the damage Oh, for do the you gold. have the Rhythm of Wild? It's a three and red and green. Mm -hmm. and no, then... it is one a red and a green. One a red and green. I thought it was four. Creature no. spells can't be countered, and all creatures you control have, have riot. riot. That's more dope than I thought. A plus Jesus. one, plus one counter, or with haste. So basically, I give Everything haste. Oh, if I already have a haste enabler, they all come out with a plus one plus one counter. Yep. What's uh, more important, they can't be countered. So, yes. Morph Boy? Morph Boy? <laughs> they can't be countered, and if he has Commander out, can't cast spells during combat. Stuff. No more Settle of the Wreckage. Yeah, no more Settle the Wreckage. Which more is path. a bit. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Or... Such a, or literally. And then also, too, it says. Maze of Myth still works because that's not casting a spell. Yes. Yeah, yeah screw it. Um, also, too, it says. With his command specifically, it says. 
during combat. Gross doesn't combat say right your group. combat. It just says combat. It's protecting against your your opponents can't do wait, stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Else. It's combat in general. It's combat in general. Oh man. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's, and it's opponents. You still can. I yeah. can. Your opponents can't cast spells during combat. Period. Yeah. Hold <laughs> Period. up that path. Hold up that beast within. So mm -hmm. now we're just main phasing our instincts. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yep. Now. This one, I love this card. It's a, it's printed all the time. It costs like 50 cents. Aggressive Mammoth. Three and three oh, green. Yeah. It's a 8-8 eight, eight Trampler Elephant. And other creatures you control have Trample. Well, here's the thing that I find funny. The it's fact a that big bargain. I chose, I chose a Rakdos Commander, and I'm playing it as a control deck. And he chose a, Naya, a Naya Commander that he's playing King. <laughs> Rather than just 5-0, it's great. <laughs> Which goes to show you guys that doesn't matter what commander you have, your personality will naturally just shine through. Oh, it yeah, just yeah. will. Uh, so I love me some commander. <laughs> and I play win more morphs. Win exactly. more morphs. <laughs> Don't you judge me. Whisper Silk Cloak. Creature's unblockable. Yep. And Hexproof or Shroud? Shroud, which is why I don't currently run it. Stuff to keep you safe. I'll bunch a bunch of these into one group. Norn's Annex. Ghostly Prison. Wind Borne Muse. Uh, Baird Stude of Argyle. Oh, yeah, what's Wind Borne Muse do? Windborn Muse is very It's Ghostly Prison on a creature. Yes. Oh, good stuff. All of these basically say, unless also... Our Change of Tides. Our Change of Tides I didn't put on here, but... They're all prison effects. Yes, that's what all of those... They all do the same thing. They all have different costs and whatnot. And even if... A lot of people are questioning, like, oh, why would you put Sphere in like Death Ness or anyone that many enchantments? Even if that enchantment count is two, that's still two they have to pay to attack you. Yeah. Like, you have another and enchantment. And if that second that. enchantment is Ghostly Prison... That's definitely four. Four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sandworm Convergence. Oh, you did put it in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sandworm Good Convergence point. is in here. I Flyers can attack you and... You create uh, a 5-5 five, five every single turn. Yep. Which is great. Brave the Sands, which is each creature you control may block an additional creature. Also gives them plus one toughness, I believe. And Vigilance. And Vigilance. Yes. And vigilance. It almost seems anti-goading. Uh, I like this. It's my creature. I like this because the downside with Goad is the fact that... I mean, the upside with Goad is the fact that your opponent's usually attacking... Everyone else, but if there's one instance where your where creature doesn't have good or anything that happens, they're coming after you. Yeah. So to put up some pillar fort stuff, it's really really nice. But yeah, I agree. An awesome card. That you never know if someone's gonna really fog good. you or something. Oh yeah, and avoid the go. Defensive formation. Instead of the attacking player, you choose how creatures attacking deal combat damage. Oh, oh what? Twenty two cent enchantment that costs one white. Oh, that's good. It's very good. It's disgusting. It's like an anti. That's like banding, except it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, um, you it's also have anti Audric. Also have a what? Audric. Audric. Yeah, Audric, master tactician, is the opposite of that. I choose how my creatures. I choose how creatures block rather than choosing how damage is dealt. Yep. Yeah. Chaos sphere. Creatures with flying cannot block creatures without flying. Creatures without flying can block creatures with flying. Interesting. Then there's the things that are, un I want people to fight me, which is weird, seeing as I just made people not want to fight me. Grand melee, creatures have to, all creatures attack each turn of Fable, and all creatures block each turn of Fable. Yep. Then you have light main field. I know this one. So whenever a creature attacks, for each creature that's attacking, it is dealt one damage. So basically, if you attack like five creatures, they're all getting hit by five damage before blocks or anything. It's, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> super, super awesome. Champion of Lamholt, keeping me, uh, making it so my creatures are unblockable. Quest for Renewal, which is a uh, half seedborn muse. Then you have Assemble the Legion, Var for to build up my board state, Assemble the Legion, Varchild, and Loyal Apprentice. And if you want any expensive cards, Morari's Wake, Balefire Dragon, Iroh's God of Victory. So needless to say, we're all really, really, really excited about it. But it is that time again to call Last Call. Oh, last last call. call. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So final thoughts on all of our decks, as well as our opponent's decks, or I guess frenemies decks at this point. <laughs> I really, as much crap as we gave you, Eric, I actually do really, really like oh, your deck. It's going to be fun to play. It's, it's going it's to be fun to play. It's, it's, but it's one, that's why I like Commanders, because... Even though you know you're willingly going in to get your keep your teeth kicked in, you're gonna have fun doing it. Oh yeah! <laughs> like you know, your deck seems really, really cool. Um, our deck seems just like, hey, you're attacking. I've got to now calculate that into my plans. But like, oh, it's gonna make me freaking attack. I've got to keep up blockers now. I don't have that yeah. many creatures. Oh, this is not that gonna be good. It seems really, really cool. I like my deck just because I'm drawing yeah. all the cards and yeah. doing all the cards. Um. I still have to figure out a win con for mine. Uh, mine does cool morph things. I it don't want to do the lab man combo. And it does seem very staxy, where it's like we're all just like on the edge, like. So uh, more tinkering will be needed to be done. Uh, your deck seems kind of lacking a win con too. I mean, you do all these cool drawing and discarding things, I guess but I, I can't I've, see I've your got, end 
dumb game. I've got the torment. My end game, I feel like, is probably just pinging people with damage whenever they're drawing cards. Oh, just I'm burn not, them down. Basically, yeah. like a weird burning style. Um, we need to brew more, I think. I need yeah. to pick things. Yeah, yeah. My, yours, deck, yours my deck has the win. easiest of time of it. You're a swinger. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm his, a swinger. His, and that's the thing, is like, his is more or less like combat damage, mine's just kind of just like effect damage for the most part. I don't know, I, I really, really like it. Yeah. There's a lot of control with morphs because not only can I count things, I can destroy artifacts or enchantments, I can kill creatures. Yeah. It's a whole lot of versatility. And last, we want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Like everything. Subscribe to us. Please start commenting. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to know why you think my deck's horrible. Why you think Eric is the best deck builder on the planet. We want to know why Aaron does what he does. I don't even know Explain. what I mean, like, <laughs> Why does Aaron have to control and steal our yeah. stuff? Yeah. Why do you have to be so Because good? you guys are such great stuff. But um, thanks, guys. We're up to about 40 subscribers or so. Keep jumping that subscribe button. We're sorry we missed a week, but, you know, brewing takes a bit to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you next time.